so this is our objective to discuss that if you have a function f which is defined from x to y where x and y both of them are metric spaces and it is a continuous the question is if f is compact if x is compact can you say that f of x is also compact that means under the continuity is the compactness is preserved that means if x is compact will it implies that f of x is also compact so it is regarding the preservation of the compactness under the continuous map so that is the theorem or the result is true that is we can take it as a theorem that if f is continuous mapping of a compact metric space into a metric space y compact metric space let's say it is x then prove that f of x is compact okay now here you have to prove that x, f of x is compact so as we have discussed that the statement if you want to prove that any set is compact you can use any of this five statement as equivalent statement that means x is totally bounded plus complete you can prove every sequence as convergent sub sequence you can prove or every open covering as finite sub covering or every family of closed subsets of x as finite intersection property itself a non empty intersection or you can prove that any infinite subset of x as limit point any of the statement you can pick and you can prove that f of x is compact so i will prove this result using two of this statement okay so this is my method one it tells you that means in this method one i may use that sequential definition that means i we will show that every sequence yn of a points in f of x as sub sequence ynk which is converse converse in f of x this is our objective i am using the sequential definition so as yn is belongs to f of x which we have taken every sequence so let us say this yn is a sequence in f of x so as per the definition there exists xn is belongs to x such that f of xn is equal to yn so i can say that as per the definition of f of x which is a range of this function f so here we have assumed that x is compact that is the means given the condition our assumption and this xn is a sequence in x and xn is a sequence in x so as per the compactness theorem or equivalent statement we say that this sequence has convergent sub sequence therefore we can say that x xn as convergent sub sequence in x let us say that sequence is x and k let's say that sequence is x and k and it converges to 
x and k is a subsequence of x n and x and k is tan to or it's converse to uh, x as x and k is tend to infinity now we have given that f is continuous since f is continuous we have and x and k is converse to x so if i apply f as per the definition of continuity therefore we can say that f of x and k is tends to f of x as n k tends to infinity so what is this f of x and k which is exactly y and k will tend to f of x as n k tends to infinity so this y n has a subsequence y n k which is converse in f x i can say that therefore this y n k is converse to f of x to small f of x in f x therefore every sequence y n in f x has conversion subsequence y n k and therefore f of x is compact capital f of x is compact so this is the method 1 now in the method 2 we can use any of the other definition or any of the other equivalent statement so i may use that other definition for example open covering let's say take talking taking the open covering so every open covering has finite sub cover so that is real talk so let us consider let the script g of g i where i belongs to this b n open covering of f of x how to prove that this g script g has finite sub cover so here what we have it is f of x is a union or subset of union of g is there given that f is com continuous which is given so as per the argument or given that f is continuous since f is continuous we can say that therefore and and g is open or gi is open here gi is open therefore f inverse of gi it is open in y so f of f inverse of gi is open in x okay so what we can have here if i apply so now we have this f of x is subset of union of g i so this implies x is a subset of f inverse of union of g i 
and by definition of f inverse we can say that this is a subset of union of f inverse of ga this is again a set theoretical result now each of this are open set open sets in x and x is compact so i can say that x has open covering so i may define that for this script f if i define as f inverse of gi where i belongs to this gamma is an open covering of x since x is compact a finite sub covering of this is there so finite number of sets f inverse of g1 f inverse of g2 up to f inverse of gn such that x is a subset of union of i running from 1 to n f inverse of g so therefore i can say that fx if i apply f both side it is a subset of f inverse of union of this we have again we can say that this is union of this f of f inverse of g and so this is subset of union of g so that means this f of x is covered by finitely many of g so we can say that every open covering of f of x has finite sub covering every open covering of f of x has finite sub covering therefore f of x is compact so you can take this is also as an project you have another three results are left using that one can prove any of this result which we have discussed here i have proved with the help of uh, two statement that is sequentially compact which is says that every sequence has subsequence which is convergent another statement every open covering has finite sub covering we have another three result is left using that one can prove that this f of x is compact that is you can take as an project so here very interesting results we got that means uh, if f is a function from x to y and which is a continuous function and your f x is compact that will implies f of x is compact so the question now whether this is the same situation on this side we have a same situation can we say that f of x is closed plus bounded that means if you have a function which is continuous defined over the compact set to another matrix space y can we say that f of x is closed plus bound what is your argument regarding this whether this is true or not it will be true because we have proved that f if any set is a compact it implies closed plus bounded why because it is a compact okay then it is totally bounded totally bounded implies it is boundedness and every compact set is always a closed set so that's why or every compact set is a closed set so that's why it is a if it is compact then it is closed definitely is there and it is bounded also because it is totally bounded 
okay so that is the corollary of the above results we can write that that f be a continuous function from a compact matrix space x into matrix space y then the image f of x is closed and bounded subset of y and i'm not going to discuss the proof of that i already discussed the proof in the here i already said what why this is close plus bounded because i'm explaining you again f of x due to the above result f of x is a compact since it is a compact it is we have proved that any set which is a compact which is closed always and since it is a complex it is a totally bounded compact it is a totally bounded totally bounded always implies boundedness so that's why it is a closed plus bounded okay so i think so i will stop for today here if you have any question you can ask